Hello, Area 56. I'm so glad that you're back and join us again today. All of January, we are talking about self-control. Self-control is choosing to do what you should, even when you don't want to. Y'all, this week I've gotten frustrated with a lot of things. And when I'm frustrated, I get really angry really quickly. Do you do that too? Let's head to our story today with Julie. Hi everyone, I'm Julie. And today we're going to take a look at the book of 1 Samuel. You might know the people in this story already, David and Saul. This is the same David who was anointed to become the next king of Israel and took out Goliath, the Philistine's giant, with a rock and a sling. Do you remember that? Well, at this time, Saul was the king, but he was an inconsistent ruler with massive mood swings. He wasn't the greatest king. In fact, he made a lot of choices that put other people in danger, including David. After David showed no fear in defeating Goliath, he enlisted in Saul's army. Even though he was young, he was gifted on the battlefield. David even won several big battles. In fact, he did so well that the people cheered for David more than they did for Saul. People loved David and Saul got extremely jealous. He looked right at David, right in his face, and he was overcome with such extreme jealousy. Saul was so jealous of David and so afraid that David would take over his throne and become more popular than him, that he decided that there was only one thing to do. He had to kill David. Saul decided to take action. David and his men were camped out in the desert of Moam. Saul decided to take his own soldiers and chase after them. As Saul and his men were closing in on David, Saul received word that the Philistines were attacking Israel. He had to give up the chase and head back home to deal with the attack. However, David and his men hid out in a safe place. A messenger brought the news to Saul about David's hiding spot. We are told that Saul was so enraged that he hadn't caught David yet that he took 3,000 men to swarm where David was hiding. The goal was simple, scare him out of hiding, capture him, and put him to death. David caught wind of this and hurried to hide in a nearby cave. Saul and his men were looking all over the place for David, but he couldn't find him. Saul then told his men to halt and wait for a moment. Saul then crept into the very same cave where David and his men were hiding. Thankfully for David, Saul didn't see them. In fact, Saul only went in there for one reason. Can you guess why Saul went into the cave? <laughs> well, actually, Saul had to go to the bathroom. It's true. Listen to this right in the Bible. I'm not making this up. It says 1 Samuel 24, 3 through 4. Saul came to some sheep's pens along the way. A cave was there. Saul went in to go to the toilet. David and his men were far back in the cave. David's men said, This is the day the Lord told you about. He said to you, I will hand your enemy over to you. Then you can deal with him as you want. Basically, David's men were telling him that God had delivered Saul into his hands. Instead of Saul killing David, now David was in a position to kill Saul, take the throne, and put an end to Saul's reign. David was angry that Saul was trying to kill him. He was frustrated that the king he had served was turning on him in such a nasty way. If anyone had a reason to be totally angry, it was David. Maybe he should listen to his men and take Saul out. But that's not what David did. Instead, while Saul was busy doing his business, David crept up behind him. Instead of attacking him, David 
David cut off a small piece of his robe and then returned to where his men were hiding. After Saul had finished, he went back out and joined his men. Then David came out and confronted Saul. David called out to Saul. David bowed low. He lay down flat with his face towards the ground. 1 Samuel 24, 10 through 13 says, This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord handed you over to me in the cave. Some of my men begged me to kill you, but I didn't. I said, I will never lay my hand on my master. He is the Lord's anointed king. Look, my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but I didn't kill you. See, there is nothing in my hand that shows I am guilty of doing anything wrong. I haven't turned against you. I haven't done anything to harm you, but you are hunting me down. You want to kill me. May the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord pay you back because of the wrong things you've done to me. But I won't do anything to hurt you. People say evil acts come from those who do evil. So I won't do anything to hurt you. David might have been frustrated and angry. David had the chance to give in to his anger, get even, and take out Saul. Instead, he honored Saul because Saul was still the king. Saul, moved by David's words, started weeping loudly. The Bible continues, My son, David, you are a better person than I am, he said. You have treated me well, but I have treated you badly. You have just now told me about the good things you did to me. The Lord handed me over to you, but you didn't kill me. Suppose a man finds his enemy. He doesn't let him get away without harming him. May the Lord reward you with many good things. May he do it because of the way you treated me today. I know for sure that you will be king. I know that the kingdom of Israel will be made secure under your control. Now make a promise in the name of the Lord. Promise me that you won't kill the children of my family and promise me that you won't wipe out my name from my family line. David made that promise to Saul. Even though David had every reason in the world to take his anger out on Saul, he didn't let the anger take over. Instead, David paused. Have you been able to pause before when you're angry? I hope you'll think about that story this week. Let's pray together. Dear God, I know that at times we all get mad and angry. Someone hurts us and we want to get revenge. Help us be like David. Help us show forgiveness when it feels easier to lose control. Thank you for always being there when we need your help. In your name we pray, amen. You all, lots of things can make us angry, right? Someone borrows something and doesn't give it back, or even worse, they just take something of yours without asking. Someone might say something that hurts your feelings. Pretty much every time you get angry can be boiled down to something not going the way you want it to go. So, instead of losing your cool and letting your anger get the better of you, just pause, wait, Think about the wise way to respond to the situation. Ask God to help you have self-control. Let's try a next step this week and see if we can practice this. Your challenge this week is to have a conversation at a family meal. Ask your family members to hold you accountable for your anger. Explain to your family what situations or people cause you to sometimes lose control of your anger. As a family, come up with ways to keep each other accountable. We are so glad that you joined us today. If you wanna check out these next steps and other great family things, be sure to check out crosspointweb.org family and subscribe to Crosspoint's YouTube channel. Remember to hit the bell to get post notifications. We hope to see you next week. Bye.